guys, how's it going? Today we are doing a Q&A video. It's been a long time since we've done a Q&A and every time I do one, I always say we're gonna make it like a weekly thing or every other week and it never happens. I don't know why that is. And it's such a good way to answer some of the most like asked questions that are coming through. So what I did is I went through and I found a bunch of questions on like our last four videos. So I thought I would address those and then also a few questions from Instagram. Before I get into the questions though, I wanted to um, remind you guys about the Grand Garden Show happening on Mackinac Island here in August. It's August 27th through the 29th. Um, we are going. I'm really, really excited. We were able to go last year and just kind of experience the show. Mackinac Island is definitely something to go on your bucket list. It's an amazing step back in time. You get onto this island, there are no cars, all horse and buggies. Um, it's just really, really neat. And the show is amazing. You get private tours through gardens on the island that Jack Barnwell and his team have designed and planted. Absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, this year I'm actually presenting at it, freaking out just a little bit. I think we're like two months away now. Um, I haven't quite nailed down what I'm gonna talk about. I'm pretty much there. Um, and I think it's gonna be really fun, a really great experience. I would love to see you guys there. Any of you guys in that area that wanna come, that would be awesome. We will link all the information down below. You don't have to come for the whole time. There are just day passes available. Um, and there are other speakers. I mean, P. Allen Smith is gonna be there and Jack Barnwell does an amazing job um, at his uh, presentation. There will be other people presenting on various garden related topics and the garden tours are out of this world. So it's absolutely worth the trip. Would love to see you guys there. All right, let's get right into the questions. So the first one on our most recent video where I did a little landscape makeover behind our potting shed, somebody asked, won't that area get trashed when the tree comes down? Because I did mention that we have a huge elm tree above that area. I actually considered that. I stopped for just like 30 seconds and thought, should I really plant this close to the tree? And you know what? We are blessed to have an amazing tree service here in our area called Natural Tree, and they do such a good job. They come in and take huge trees down, and it's like they were never there. Like a tree never existed in that spot, and they don't even leave like a twig out of place when they leave. So I'm not worried at all about the plants that I just put in. On this same video, there was quite a discussion about my hair. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, every once in a while, I see people asking why I never put my hair in a ponytail. I don't really know why that is. I mean, I just don't. I just don't wear ponytails very often. Occasionally, I will. Um, I think I'm just used to having it down. I'm not like a huge person on changing things up. I'm a creature of habit. So I just do my hair the same way every single day. It keeps it easy. And I think um, like for heat, heat wise, people ask me like, don't you get all sweaty and doesn't it get gross? I think I'm acclimated. It's kind of like people who work outside and wear long sleeve shirts. They get acclimated to wearing that even though it looks like they're hot. They're really not that hot. And having my neck exposed to the sun is like the worst thing ever. Getting a neck burn is the worst. A recent comment from an older video was, where do you buy or order your David Austin roses from? I love David Austin roses. They are one of my favorite plants ever. Um, we actually carry them down at the garden center where I work, my parents' garden center. Um, and back when we very first started carrying them, uh, I don't think all garden centers could carry them. Like you had to go through some kind of a program or something in order to become a dealer of David Austin roses. I don't know if that's how it is now um, because I noticed that not all garden centers that I go to carry them. And I think they all should because they're amazing roses. So as far as where you can find them, I would go talk with your local garden center. That is the best way to get things like that because I don't have any experience ordering roses online. I honestly don't know what it would be like to get one in the mail, what they would look like. But like down at the garden center, people come and ask us all the time about, you know, whether or not we can get, you know, whatever it might be. And we've changed a lot through the years. Like we start carrying stuff just because we hear from people that they want things. Um, and we do our best to get them. So I would go down to your local garden center and talk to them about it. Okay, so from the video where I planted up the black urn with kind of the tropical colors, and I actually used some red in that one. And I think I'm gonna have to eat my words just a little bit on the red blooms because there are two flowers right now that I really like that have red blooms. And they are the Super Bell's Pomegranate Punch and the Super Chunia Black Cherry. And I think the reason why I like the red color of those ones is because it's more of a cool red, if that makes sense. It's not like so hot. Like I think you could pair it with some cooler colors and it would still look really pretty. So I've been really enjoying using those. But the comment was, I often get stressed when I try to do containers because things aren't perfectly centered or how I want them placed. I was wondering what's the longest you think you've spent rearranging plants in a container? I'll usually start out with the intentions of planting a few containers then just keep on messing the first one up and that's all I end up doing. I've been there. It depends, you know, sometimes, sometimes I do a container and the next day I'm looking at it thinking, I don't like that. 
and I'll tear the whole thing apart and do it over again. Maybe add a couple of different things or you know, get rid of a couple things just to make a different arrangement because not every time do we nail it. I wish we could. It's just not reality though. And I don't want to spend the whole season looking at a container that I don't love. So yeah, sometimes I'll spend a little while arranging it, not really loving it. And then I'll have to like think about it for a little while before I actually tear it apart. I am getting better about it though. I think because it's kind of my job to put plants together, it happens a little bit easier maybe, and maybe a little bit more practice would help. But sometimes I do things like in that video, I actually had to stop and recenter the centerpiece because I had it off to the side and that just happens. So I wouldn't stress out too much about it. More practice will make progress and you'll get better at it as you go. On our hedge trimming video, there were a few questions about what the red tree was that was behind me when I was sitting giving the, the my thoughts on the hedge trimmer. And that's actually a plum, an ornamental plum. I don't know exactly what variety it was here when we moved in. I think it's a cystina. Cystinas stay, which is C-I-S-T-E-N-A. They stay smaller and it is a very small plum. I think they're like an eight by eight, small ornamental tree. It is beautiful. It needs some major pruning. It's kind of like coming over and engulfing my boxwood hedge. So I need to do some pruning on it, but it looks really nice this time of year. On the success with super tunias video, quite a few questions about super tunias versus wave petunias. I've used both of them. Super tunias trail every bit as good as wave, maybe better. I think that they're more bulky. I think they're more vigorous, stronger plants, full of bloom all season long if you feed them. I think that's the biggest thing with these plants. They are fertilizer hogs. They want to be fed on a very regular basis because they're workhorse plants. They're producing so many blooms and so much color that you have to give them food in order to do that. But they do trail, they do beautifully. Teresa asked, did you ever wear gloves? I tend to always wear gloves, but it seems you never do. Do you think they're unnecessary? I do wear gloves sometimes. My favorite are Atlas Nitro gloves. Lori asked, would you consider doing a video explaining your watering system? I noticed that you have drip hoses in nearly all your beds. That is something that Erin and I were actually just talking about today because we have quite the intricate watering system here at our house. Um, I think we've got a couple different systems we're dealing with and we do have drip system in most of our flower beds, which is so, so nice. I prefer the brown tubing that has the holes every 18 inches. You can get it at like Home Depot. Um, I don't like the, the type where you just have to punch in that, like the skinny tubing and go to each individual plant. I feel like my coverage isn't as good with those because those are great for like uh, more minimalist landscapes where you don't have as many plants, but my flower beds are so packed full of, pl of plants that it would take me like years to run little drip tubes to the base of each plant. Um, so having the ones that have the holes every 18 inches and just kind of swirling them around in the beds tends to give me the best watering. Um, but we were just talking about how we need to put together a video um, and we do have some projects coming up where I'm gonna be adding to our system. So I think that would be a good time to maybe show you guys kind of what we do. It's not anything professional, but it gets the job done. Now I'm only talking about in-ground landscaping, like in your flower beds. For containers, obviously you're using little drip tubing with the emitters on the end. That's really the only way to go with containers. Um, but the in-ground landscaping, I like to use the tubing with the holes every 18 inches. So this is a great question by Rhonda. Uh, she asked what I do about weeds. Um, you didn't use garden fiber or weed killer in the new area that I just landscaped. Um, I get that question all the time and I've never really addressed it. I don't use landscape fabric in my flower beds because I like plants to naturalize. There are some great weed barriers out there though. I use some under our greenhouse. It's called DeWitt Pro. Super great landscape barrier. It's like the only one that I would ever use. Weeds do not grow through it. You know, there's some really cheap versions out there. As far as sprays go, I don't spray anything on the interior of my garden. I um, do everything by hand. I don't even use any tools because I don't feel like tools get the roots. So I just try to, and I don't like keep up on it 100%. I have weeds out in my garden. Like you guys only get to see in videos, like little pieces. <laughs> um, so you're not seeing the whole thing all at once because otherwise I would be a wreck all the time because I would want all the weeds to be pulled all the time. But yeah, just do hand weeding on my in my flower beds, but our driveway, we do spray um, because it's long. It's like a quarter mile of a gravel driveway and there's no way I could hand weed that. We do not use sterilants, um, anything like that because I don't feel like that's a good thing to use, um, but we will use spot spray um, on weeds out there because we get horrid weeds out here. I don't know what it's like for you guys, but in Eastern Oregon, we get just horrid weeds, lots of cheatgrass, which 
Cheatgrass is terrible when you have outdoor, like Dexter is indoor and outdoor kitty. Um, and when he's outside, he likes to go prowl around in the pastures around our house and there's cheatgrass. And sometimes like I check him over every single night when he comes in um, for cheatgrass, like around his paws, around his tummy, um, because if those get in, they can infect and really, you know, make it sore. So anyway, we like to spray stuff like that. What are the other things? Goat heads, we get stickers, like puncture vines, terrible, that like pop holes and tires, stuff like that. So we like to take care of those things with spray because I just do not have time to go weed that much driveway. And in one of our recent videos, I was really near our beehive and there were honeybees flying all over the place. And I had quite a few people say that they were nervous that I was so close and how often I get stung. Um, I have no fear of honeybees. I'm not allergic um, and I don't think anybody near us, um, Aaron's not allergic and none of our neighbors. So I think we're all good there. Um, but I, honeybees aren't aggressive. They just do their thing and I just leave them alone. Um, I don't like, act rambunctious around their hive. I don't hardly ever get in there or mess with them. Um, so I think that they're pretty happy honeybees. So when I'm out there weeding or kind of planting around them, they just leave me alone. I don't know, I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> Maria asks how the veggie garden is going. <sighs> the veggie garden. I was hoping to have a veggie garden planted in May and it's still not done. So you guys have, if you've been following our videos this spring, you have probably seen kind of the transformation of the west side of our house where we had a big elm tree taken out. We had a concrete weir, which is an old water access for like irrigation taken out. Um, we also, let's see, had some power lines that we had big power poles in the interior of our property. We had those lines buried. It's been quite the project. So to get everybody kind of lined up and moving on the projects, it's moved really, really slowly. I guess I should have expected that. It was a horrid winter, so everybody's been so busy just like getting people back up and running with their businesses, getting buildings back up and going that I should have expected a little bit of a longer wait. Um, we are so close now though. Um, all we have left now, so one, one other snag, um, are the arborvitas that we're planting along the fence. So we went out there to test if we could dig the holes and our irrigation lines are exactly where I need to put those arborvitas and they're only six inches below the ground. So we actually are on the schedule. We have um, an irrigation guy coming in a couple weeks. He's gonna rerun the lines about five feet away so that we can plant the arborvitas. Soon as that's done, we're gonna level out the spot and get the veggie garden going. So this year it's not gonna be a huge like amazing garden that I was hoping for. I will hopefully have time to plant a few crops to harvest in fall, but you guys will at least get to see kind of like it come together a little bit. It's just been like total chaos around here. There's always like trenches somewhere on our property or a big hole somewhere. I don't, it's just kind of funny, it's just kind of life for right now. So we'll keep you updated. Hopefully it will happen soon. Another thing I've been seeing come through is about Dexter. A lot of you guys wonder if he's inside or outside or what, um, like where he's at. If he's not in a video, you guys, he's usually inside on the couch asleep. He likes air conditioning. It's getting hot now. So like he's out um, in there right now. It's like 90 out here right now. And so he just hangs out inside all day long and usually ends up at the foot of our bed at night. And he wakes me up usually between four and five every morning wanting out. And I get up and I go put him out. <laughs> Oh, he's so spoiled. So anyway, he's in and out. He's pretty much whatever he, wherever he wants to be, that's where he is. The last three things are pictures that I posted recently on Instagram. And then I think mm, maybe one or two have made it to Facebook. Um, they're ones that I didn't ID in the description. And you guys, I will try to get better about doing that. Um, I don't know why it is that I haven't. Sometimes I don't know the exact idea of the plant and it's actually very helpful in the comment sections because sometimes some of you know it. Um, so the first one is a picture of some roses. Uh, at in the morning. We had a really cloudy morning and they were beautiful. The rose in that picture is called Distant Drums. And apart from a David Austin, that's probably one of my favorite. Um, I think it's a Floribunda, I think, um, but they're gorgeous. They kind of uh, start out a mauve like smoky pink and then with some apricot and then they just kind of age into beautiful. They're just beautiful. They're beautiful uh, roses. The next one is of a Veronica and I did not filter this picture. This was taken in the evening and the color, it just stopped me in my tracks. I didn't plant this plant. It was here when we moved in. I don't know how I didn't notice it last year, um, but it was there and it was, it's just glorious. I think it's called Royal Candles. Um, so I thought I would throw that out there that I think that's what that one is. If you think it's something else, let me know. 
because I'm happy to be wrong. There's so many varieties out there. And the very last picture is of blood orange Nemesia, which I planted in a container early this spring. Posted a picture of it because it's like the most stunning thing ever. Lots of you guys were asking how many plants it was, how it's doing with the heat. It's one plant. That picture is of one Nemesia plant. It's just loving its life. So um, it's doing really well still. We got up to, um, I think we got up to 99 yesterday. Uh, it's holding up in the heat so far. I do think it gets a little bit of filtered sun in the late afternoon. So that might be why, like what's helping it because it doesn't get that really blazing evening, like early evening sun. Um, so I don't know, I haven't had to trim it or anything. It's been watered every day and it's been fertilized on a weekly basis. So that could be why it's looking so great too. So that's it you guys. So maybe we'll make this a weekly thing. We'll see. I think that this is a good way to answer some of the questions that come in a lot. Um, and I'm sorry I can't get to all of the questions. I noticed a couple of people asking whether why I don't answer all the questions. I just can't. There are not enough hours in the day for me to do that. And I'm really sorry about that. I do read through all the comments, um, questions. If there's something I notice a lot of people asking, I will hop on and answer it just so there's no confusion. Um, but I'm thinking Q and A's might be a good way to address some of the questions. Um, anyway, keep them coming though, because I know a lot of people like to jump in and kind of share their experience with, you know, what they've learned gardening and there's lots of good information in the comment section actually I learned a lot too so we're also going on a little trip this next week we're going to Rhode Island to the Newport Flower Show and then up to Vermont to Gardner Supply and we're so excited to go these trips have been in the works for a little while now um, and we've got lots of videos planned for you guys so be watching for those we're going to tour you guys around and just show you what we're seeing so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one bye